Hello Virgo, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. How is everyone today? I hope that everyone is well and that um, everything is going the way it should be going for each and every one of you. This is a very, very busy time, Virgo. It, I mean, everyone I speak to tell me the same thing, especially for work. Work is just incredibly crazy at the moment and not only you know busy is not just at work family situations it's just generally busy with a capital B it's that time of the year and having Saturn in Capricorn you know Capricorn is all about work putting in the hard work so that we can reap the rewards so Virgo you're in your element you you always work hard anyway so it's just a bit over the top for me. I don't know you guys how your lives are. It's just been crazy. Okay, and this card is just fighting with me. Oh my God, Virgo. <laughs> Two of Cups in the reverse. Okay, in the reverse says that there is no agreement. There is some sort of disagreement in relation to partnership. For some of you this is, okay. For others of you with Saturn... Saturn is, you know, all about time, so time could be the issue here. Maybe it's not the right time now. Just before I go on to your reading, I'd just like to mention that Venus just moved into Cancer. Cancer is the house of home, right? Home, family, roots, your heritage, all that beautiful stuff. Now, Venus is love and money. Uh, it could be, you could be refining things fixing things, making your home beautiful, right? You could be buying things for the home, anything like that. <clears throat> also, that home, the home of cancer, is the house of parents, especially mum. They do say the 10th house of Capricorn is the house of the dad, but sometimes, you know, mum and dad are situated in the 4th house. So... Dear Virgo, this is a love and general reading, and this is for the period of 21st, today is the 21st of May, until the 31st of May, okay? So, one more last thing. Thank you for all that beautiful feedback in relation to my astrology reading, which I did for the Uranus in Taurus. For those of you that have not watched it, there is tarot there, it's not just astrology, and it could, the energies of that time frame would be from the new moon of the 15th of May, new moon in Taurus, until a whole month after that. So you might want to go and watch that as well. But it is Uranus in Taurus, so that video can be watched for up until the next seven years. <laughs> I'm going to laugh. I'm sure some of you are laughing. Okay, dear Virgo, let's see what's in store for you. Let's go for Virgo, the universe. <clears throat> I'm having my tea again. Cheers. Yeah, very cold in Sydney, you guys. Very cold. I'm just, everyone's been sick and I'm trying not to get sick. So let's see. Oh, my God. In the now position, Seven of Swords. As you did see me shuffling, I did make do some reversals. Oh, my God. <laughs> The cards do not lie. They just don't. This is your challenge position. Okay. In the distant past, we've got the Hierophant, which is the energy of Taurus. In the recent past, we have the Fool card. A new cycle. Crowning your reading, this is where you're at. Eight of Pentacles. Not surprising at all. In the near future, oh my God, we've got the devil. In the upright, very Capricornian energies, very strongly here. In the position of you is the Queen of Swords. In the environment position is the Seven of Pentacles. That is what's external to you. In the hopes and fears, here you are in your element. This is more than likely you guys. 
if not you it's another Taurus or a Capricorn so we've got Capricorn and Taurus it's going to be different for each and every one of you of course this is general this reading right and the outcome is the five of Pentacles but it's in the reverse great okay now at the bottom of the deck is the star dear Virgo the star is Aquarian energy the star is all about healing it's all about the internet anything to do with Uranian energy Uranus rules Aquarius right Uranus is actually in Taurus as of the 15th of May 2018 it will be there for seven years roughly so a card of healing a card of reaching that bright star getting to your wish six of cups is beneath that it's in the upright some of you may be dealing with someone from the past others of you are dealing with family issues children anything to do with innocence so we've got two children here that are playing very happy together right there is no stealth there is no energy just like what we have here so what does this mean for you Virgo the seven of swords you know that this can mean that someone is trying to get away with something there they're doing something that is not above board something that they are trying to manipulate something to to acquire now this is of course it's a swords card right so it's air energy some of you may be dealing with Aquarius others of you may be dealing with Capricorn we also have Taurus here right and in the position of you we've got the Queen of Swords now logically this is your position in the Celtic cross so this is Gemini Libra or Aquarian energy some of you may have strong air in your chart it could be your moon or your rising sign but if this is a person because it can be another person right then as I said we've got the Aquarian card here now if this is not another person and this is your energy the way you are coming across in this time it says that you may be using strong language you may be speaking your truth or you may be cutting someone out of your life and that could be in relation to any sort of partnership it can be emotional can be family orientated can even be business right your challenge here and if this is let's say this is someone else in your life then this would probably be the same person committing an act which is not above board not letting people know they're trying to do something something which is quite conflictual it's a seven right so he's taking his five swords and moving away he, he is leaving two swords behind so those two swords for me do speak of a partnership they do speak of trying you know maybe not having the clarity and trying to make a decision now five five of swords is another number of conflict it can be a an argument right so your challenge is the two of cups and that's in the reverse so this is the second time that this card has come out how can we ignore it so your challenge is to find your balance now for me for a few of you your challenge is to begin something begin a brand new partnership and why why do I say that is that because because uh, because the card is in the reverse I tend to say that we haven't graduated to the two of cups so the card before this is the ace of cups so your challenge is to have a brand new beginning in love or in anything that will fill your cup up emotionally right Right. in the distant past we've got the high priest and the high priest the hierophant is anything to do with religion anything to do with some sort of a commitment feeling as though you are 
closed up and in a box, not being able to move freely. Now the Hierophant with the, um, the shadow side, which it's called in the Witch's Tarot, which is in the near future, they're quite similar, these energies, for me. These are restrictions, right? Each tarot card has got many layers, many, many meanings. But when you put them together, they go in a certain direction. Now, having both these cards in your reading says that some of you may be bound by some sort of a commitment. Okay, this is in the distant past position. Some sort of a commitment. Maybe you are involved with another Taurian who has got commitments. Now, the uh, Devil card, which is called the Shadow Side, is in the near future. Again, we know that the energy of the Devil is Capricorn, right? Capricorn says that you need to put in the hard work. And there are restrictions before you can reap the rewards. So it is in the upright, you guys. And in the Witch's Tarot, it's called the Shadow Side. So we all know that we've... Everything has got two sides. We've got the light side and the shadow side. So we're more leaning towards the darker side in the near future. Now, what are you dealing with? These youngsters here are having trouble. They're scared to look into the light. They're scared to look into the truth. So what is the energy of the devil here for you? Is it a sexual um, energy? Is it... A restrictive energy is it a, an energy which has drawn you in and you cannot move freely is it working too much because the Hierophant can be let's say a corporate uh, position that you're in there's the hierarchy right and of course the priest is the one that's the higher up this could be a boss of course this could be someone who is in charge if this is in relation to your corporate position or even business let's say let's say that you're the one that's in charge you've got to go by the book you've got to do things in the religious in the traditional way and it is in the upright so we do talk of tradition here as I said it could also speak of marriage so could there be stealth within a marriage within a long-term relationship We do have two females here, the Queen, Queen of Swords, excuse me, and the Queen of Pentacles. Could this be uh, the same sex, the same sex relationship, of course. Could it be, could it be that there is a choice that you've got to make and you're hoping to be able to cut out one person from your life. Could that be the case? In the environment position, we've got the Seven of Pentacles, which is what's external to you usually. But this is a card of taking time out and um, thinking whether to invest more time, more time, more energy, more of yourself. It is a seven, again, a number of conflict. Now we've got we've got a few pentacles here. We've got the Eight of Pentacles, which is crowning your reading, and that is you putting in the hard work, looking at the finer details. And I think I've done how many? Like, this is the fourth reading. I think three signs got the Eight of Pentacles. Busy, busy. Busy, Virgo. Looking at the finer details, checking out each and every single detail. You need to... And with this card, you need to put more work in whatever you are working on, dear Virgo. What are you working on? Are you working on, on a relationship? Are you planning something? Is this your energy with the Seven of Swords? Is this your energy? Are you doing something that is not known? Are you secretly, intelligently planning something out? And this could be at work because we've got the Eight of Pentacles. Now in the recent past we've got the Fool, which is a brand new beginning, a brand new cycle. This is taking a risk, beginning again, doing the, um, 
you've like you've completed something right you've completed there's been an ending and now you are beginning again now this is the energy of Aries Uranus just moved out of Aries into Taurus what are you going to do are you going to look at what you value are you beginning literally and meta metaphorically we can say a brand new journey if that is the case it is something that's quite exciting okay you are willing to take a risk you have begun you have begun is it a new relationship is this someone from your past which is your challenge and this could be a business partnership as well let's see In your hopes and fears, we have the Queen of Pentacles, right? So as I said, Virgo, Taurus or Capricornian energy. She's in the upright. She's looking beautiful. This is how you're hoping to become. You're hoping to be a business owner. You're hoping to be the person in charge. She is, she's grounded. She's, the, she's a leader. She's a perfectionist. She's stable. She's acquired with business. She's done anything. She's, she's capable of anything and everything. And she's here to stay, you guys. We know that putting in the hard work, you know, eventually you will reap the rewards. If this is someone else that you are hoping for in your life, then I can see that they are very stable financially. They're quite prosperous as well. They're doing really, really well. And they are someone who's very, very grounded, someone very stable who can provide. Now, in the outcome position is the Five of Pentacles. Now, it was in the reverse. Being in the upright says we don't have enough. We're feeling left out in the cold. Spiritually, we're at an imbalance, right? But it's in the reverse, which says, thank goodness it's in the reverse. We go back to the Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles, yes, is the miser card. So financially, you may be careful. But looking at the Four of Pentacles, let's say, it's someone holding those pentacles close to them, right? Holding on very tightly to something that they spiritually, financially, and um, even materialistically, they're being very careful with not to lose. They're not letting go. Now, even if this is emotionally, it could be someone that is holding back. And maybe that's why this is the challenge. And this could be you, could be your partner. Okay, let's see what we can do with this card, right? As I said, being in the reverse could be the beginning of something brand new. Now, the Queen of Pentacles is, is the Mother of Earth. Uranus just moved into Taurus. Taurus is all about the Earth. It is all about our value system, right? Let me take some Sibylas. I would like to look at first the shadow side. I want to see what this devil energy is. Are you overworked and underpaid? If that is the case, it's time to move on. If you are not being appreciated, it is time to move on. And that is in any, any case, whether this is romantic or not. Let me look at the shadow side. Three Sibyllas. We've got the Namika female enemy we've got the fortuna which is like the wheel of fortune this is the energy of jupiter in scorpio jupiter is in scorpio generally the fortuna is the wheel turning right and then we've got the artista so the artista for me is like aquarian energy you guys why do i say that aquarius is ruled by uranus this here is the scientist that's made some sort of discovery. It can even be a lawyer, a judge, whoever sits behind a table, someone who is quite intellectual, 
So intellect brings up air signs, right? I did mention that we've got the star card here, which is Aquarian energy. So the uh, the change here is even if Namika, let's say it's a female, right? Let's say that it's a female. We've got the um, wheel of fortune in between. So we've got the female and the male here. And I see animosity, obviously, from the female. But as you can see, her mask is coming off, right? So she's going to spill the beans, right? And then with the wheel turning, the discovery or the news will come in, let's say. You will receive the knowledge. And you know what? If this is Uranian energy, well, then this says that that information would probably come in quickly, right? In whatever this means for you, whatever you, you are dealing with in relation to knowledge coming in, something being known, right? Now, since we have the shadow side here, and that is a difficult energy, let's say that we do have Uranian energy here with the wheel turning here it is moving and you will be moving away from this difficult and negative energy whether this is a person or not it can just be the energy right okay let's see so I'm going to look now at the seven of swords in the now position with the two of cups that's in the reverse now the artista as i said here can always be a solicitor this could be someone who is a doctor someone who's very intellectual this could be someone who just sits behind a desk yes so I feel with these three Sibylas that we are breaking away from this devil energy. Okay, let's see. Seven of Swords, Two of Cups. We've got the Falsita, there you go. Falsita can speak of lack of trust, deception. Sometimes it can mean playfulness, right? Omaggio di preziosi, so this could be a financial situation because we've got the precious gift, all about things that are valuable, valuables, right? Okay, or this could mean a gift, as I said. So, what is precious to you? And then we've got the Belvedere. Now, the Seven of Swords, you know, can always be a card of intelligence, doing something intelligently using your head now sevens always speak of the chariot so that could mean moving forward the belvedere says that something is coming in it is right next to the the gift now the belvedere can also being can also mean that you're on the lookout okay so something could be coming in that you did not trust that it would Right? That's what I get from that. Something that you did not expect, you did not trust that it would happen. Let me look at that, um, the environment position, which is the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, we've got a Amore. Little Cupid is here. We've got Lamante, which is the um, <clears throat> the male lover. This is Romeo, someone who's very emotional, very giving. And then we've got the Sospiri, which is like the three of wands for me. So this is hoping and sighing, wishing for those ships to come in and waiting. And the Seven of Pentacles always speaks of waiting, right? So I guess that it's... 
if you are waiting for your ships to come in, they're coming in, but there's a moment of pause here. And this, it's, it's little amore. Let's look at the Five of Pentacles, which is in the reverse. Now, this could even be an offer that's coming in, right? Because the Lamante is waiting. He's waiting for his Juliet. It's as though he's offering his heart. Little Cupid is right there. This can be any sort of an offer that's going to make you happy, right? Let's look at the last card. Superbia, which is something beautiful. This can speak of ego as well. The Delta, which is the loyal companion, okay, best friend. And we all know that anything to do with relationships, friendship is the uh, foundation that you can build on. That is the first and most important thing in regards to any relationship. And then we've got Conversazione, which is pleasant conversations around a table. Now, this could be in relation to family, business. Even, you know, just with your friends. So we've got loyal friendship here. Pleasant conversation. Something lovely is coming in. It looks as though the ego will drop. And things will be um, much more on a stable ground. Why do I say that? For Delta, the dog. The dog trusts its owner, right? There is trust here. Even though we've got the cat here. Lack of trust. So that's why I'm saying that. Could it be that there is lack of trust with, with air qualities here? And here we've got the loyal dog and it's on top of the pentacles. So it could be the earth sign here. Let me look at the queen of swords in the position of you. Very important position here. So we've got the menio, which is a partnership, a spiritual bond. Prigione, here we go, there's the Capricornian energy. So the um, Prigione, someone is tied up, not being able to move, move freely, and that could be dealing with anything to do with commitments because the Imenio is some sort of bond. It could be, could be bondage, right? We do have, remember, the Hierophant here. And then we've got the Vedovo. So this is, you know, being stuck in the past, not being able to move forward. This is the widower. So someone has been tied up. Some of you may be letting go of some sort of relationship where you felt very bound and you felt like you were being suffocated. Look at these three cards. I'm going to take one more card though. Now, the chains here can speak of many things. They could speak of children. You're not able to move because you have children. You did have that six of cups, right? And this could be in relation to your partner as well. It could go either way. Whatever the case, the third card is not an easy card. So those two cards together, for some of you, this could mean that you're stuck in the past. Some of you may have lost someone, literally. Someone may be in jail, right? Someone may have been in trouble with the law because the Queen of Swords can be, can be a judge. I'm going to take one more spieler in that position. I, you can't see the cards there, but anyway, one more card for that, one more Sabila. And... And then we've got the Dottore. So after hardship, heartache, difficulty, feeling chained up and not being able to move freely. That's why we've got the star card, which is the general energy. We've got the Dottore, which says that there is healing. Now time heals everything, right? Time heals all. We all know that. Time, Kronos, which is Saturn. The Lord of Time, 
let me look at I want to see what this fool is what is this new journey and then I will close up your reading dear Virgo I feel as though someone may be La Manta here with the, the um, Romeo either because we do have looking across the seas here check that out there may be a distance you may be dealing with someone who is at a distance that's what the star card speaks of as well let's look at the full card okay we've got jealousia which is jealousy right regrets past regrets then we've got the vecchia signora which can be an older person in your life. This can be a mother figure, a grandmother, and this could also be a visitor. So some of you may be visiting someone or you are accepting a visitor. Someone is coming to you because we do have movement with a fool. And then we've got the il namico. So the il namico, look at this. The Il Namiko can be an enemy, but it also can speak of transformation to me. Now, I'm going to take another Sibila, but because we've got the snake there, okay, it's just like the energy of the Seven of Swords, right? Same situation. Look at the enemy. He's looking at this woman and he's running away. So I feel as though, even though it's the last card, it looks as though he's moving. But he does have the snake which is all about transformation, letting go of something, shedding your skin, right? For a situation maybe that's been long, that's been there for a long time, and doing this is with a fool, right? So maybe with this new journey, you are shedding your skin. The fool is a risk taker, remember? Let me take one more card. The Jealousia card does speak of, you know, restrictive energy. And it can be literal jealousy that you are running away from. Okay. And then we've got the Ace of Pentacles. It's like the Ace of Pentacles. This is the safe. Denaro, which speaks, it says dollar, right? Um, Denaro, so this is financial stability, uh, security. This is um, also matrimonio vantaggioso. So I can't even read it. It does speak of an advantageous matrimony. So some of you may be running away from that. Others of you will be running into that, whichever works for you. And for those of you that are beginning a new business, then this is perfect. This is perfect. So you are transforming, changing your skin shedding your skin and being born again right and we do have jupiter in scorpio scorpio is the transformative energy death and transformation right jupiter is all about finances it's all about expansion and growth and it does grow on everything so sometimes it can grow on negative things but usually jupiter is a benevolent energy so Dear Virgo, I think that I will leave it at that. I have mentioned the signs already. Now, I would also like to mention um, the signs Cancer, Scorpio or Pisces as well because we do have the, um, the Two of Cups here, right? Some of you may be dealing with a water sign. We also have, because of the Lamante, the Lamante reminds me of the Knight of... Uh, the Knight of um, Cups, sorry, he's a very, very romantic sort of a character. So the Knight of Cups is a water sign. So that's for a small amount of you. It could be Sun, Moon or Rising as well. So I'd need to mention that lastly as well. So you guys, thank you so much for being here. Do take care. I will be back um, early June, I'm not promising for the first because I've got crazy obligations around the end of May. So give me a few days in June, I will be back with your um, beginning of June readings, right? 
Keep well and I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Virgo, for being here. Bye for now.